I have a mark on my neck that looks suspiciously like a love bite. And it's left over from the most damaging relationship of my life. Now, thankfully, this relationship ended a few months ago, but oh my word, it caused me a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, and it ultimately taught me a great lesson, which is this. If something gets under your skin, do something about it. In my case, this is both metaphorical and quite literal. See, last year, I spent three months in remote Amazon jungle in Guyana. And together with two of my friends and guided by members of the YY community, we set out to be the first team to paddle from source to sea of Guyana's Essequibo River. And it's fair to say uh, that we spent quite a bit of time getting up close and personal in the Amazon jungle. And I came back in a relationship. Well, I say relationship, it was uh, very one-sided and exceptionally hard to get out of. The problem being, this wasn't a relationship with a person. It was a relationship with a parasite. A parasite gifted to me through the bite of an infected sandfly. And you know what, at first it didn't really bother me, because it didn't hurt or itch. But then this happened. The lesion began to get deeper, bigger, pussy. Um, at one point, it really started to smell. Uh, sorry if you've just eaten. So I figured around this time, it was probably sensible to get it checked out. So I went to London's Hospital for Tropical Diseases, where they did a biopsy. Incidentally, I've got a huge fear of needles. I don't know if anyone else has. So being under a bright surgeon's light, actually not too dissimilar to this, uh, my neck exposed, seeing an injection, and then hearing the word scalpel literally just struck fear into my heart, as did what came next. I was told I had leishmaniasis, or to you and me, a flesh-eating parasite had taken residence in my neck. A parasite that apparently had the potential to eat away at my nose, mouth, and throat. So when I say, if something gets under your skin, do something about it, I really do mean it. Unfortunately, in my case, this meant undergoing three weeks of chemical therapy, being pumped full of a toxic drug that dates back to the 1940s. I was warned that the drug is highly aggressive, and my heart and liver functions were monitored closely. And as the days and weeks went by, my body started to ache in ways I've never felt. I'd gone from the fittest I'd ever been to being unable to get out of bed without help. But slowly and thankfully, the lesion began to heal. And like any significant relationship, it left a mark, a scar on my neck. Yet this parasite touched me in far deeper ways. I messaged two people I'd met along Guyana's Essequibo River to ask if they'd ever heard of leishmaniasis, and if so, how they treated it. I messaged my friend Philip from the YY community, and he said people in his village will put crushed turtle shell into the bite in order to heal it. My friend Faye, well, she said she burnt the parasite out, putting boiling cow fat into the skin. It felt like I'd been fried, she messaged. I asked her why she didn't go to hospital to get it treated, and she said, well, to be honest, it wasn't really much of an option, because it would involve six weeks away from home. And when you live in a remote area, have children, or have limited funds, sometimes this just isn't possible. And while local treatments may be effective at healing that initial sore, Doctors I've spoken to have said that there's been little research into whether it stops secondary infection further down the line. So why isn't more known? It's because leishmaniasis is a neglected tropical disease, sometimes called the parasite of the poor. Very simply, because the people who get it are usually poor, there is little capital incentive to do much about it. Leishmaniasis, however, 
is the second biggest parasitic killer after malaria, and 98 countries around the world are at risk from infected sandflies. So there's clearly a need for more research, more funding, and treatment options better suited to remote and difficult locations. It was accident of birth, a passport, that meant I could walk into a specialist hospital and be seen by experts for free. My kayaking journey was the most risky thing I've ever done, but it was a privileged choice. And in the early days in the jungle, I would really struggle to sleep as my brain went through the threats, of which there were many. Daily, we'd encounter spiders, snakes, scorpions. We were navigating rapids and paddling past 18-foot caiman, um, terrifying when you're in an inflatable kayak. We even had a jaguar come through camp. And as I lay in my hammock at night, listening to the jungle roar to life, for the first time in my adult life, I felt like I truly understood what it meant to be human. My senses alive, suddenly aware of the fragility of my existence, the fragility of humanity. Yet more terrifying than anything I encountered in the jungle was the global healthcare inequality that I came face to face with when I returned. And as I switched my hammock for a hospital bed, going through my own outdated treatment that I was lucky to be having, I struggled to figure out if and how I could make a difference at all. You see, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a chemist, Unfortunately, I don't control the purse strings of companies that could actually make a difference to this problem. All I really know is how to craft words. And at this point, I should say, if there are young children watching, the images I'm about to show are distressing. And as my energy slowly started to return, I began to write. I wrote because I wanted people to know the hurt and the pain that this parasite causes. I wanted people to know that one billion people around the world are at risk from this, one billion. I wanted people to know that every year 30,000 people die of it. I wrote because most people have never heard of it. And I wrote because it got under my skin. I call this poem a love letter to a flesh-eating parasite. You ate away at me, or tried to at least, piece by piece you tore my flesh for lunch and considered my nose and soft palate a potential light snack. Something for later, perhaps. An unusual choice of feast, British meat, a rarity. I wouldn't say delicacy, though although delicate indeed what lies beneath all of us, flesh, bones, the beating fear of silence. Yet somehow we found each other, entwined over a poorly laid spread. You were rude, if I'm honest, turned up unannounced. Didn't have much in, well, except my neck, and that was pretty unwashed. Salty mind, it was the best I could do at such short notice. For what it's worth, I'm sorry it ended so badly. I mean, the scalpel to the neck was probably more painful to me than it was to you. But the drugs, those slow, aching three weeks, 21 days picking apart the damage like an old woman struggling with a zip, that, I'm sure, wasn't fun for you. I've heard from others that sometimes you disappear on your own accord, I'd say ghosting, but given the circumstances, that doesn't seem appropriate. My friend said she burnt you. Burning cow fat searing into her skin seemed like a more painful option. She didn't have a choice. I did think about you, you know, towards the end. They even monitored my heart because of you. It didn't break, but if I think about you hard enough, it might. 
Drugs threatened to close my veins to you as I could no longer close my mind. You've gone. At least we think so. You never really know, though, do you, with lovers that really uh, bury deep? They have a strange habit of turning up again unannounced. I still think about you. Every day, in fact. I see your mark in the mirror, that random love bite. A mark of compassion. For I know you got under my skin and will get under others too. One billion, potentially. I know I'm not special to you. Although, please, next time, if you fancy a munch, do call before you pop over for lunch. See, it wasn't just a parasite that got under my skin. It was the injustice of it. Leishmaniasis and other neglected tropical diseases are not problems of the poor, they are problems of humanity. And I wonder what we could do if we put our hearts, our minds, our wallets, and our voices behind issues like neglected tropical diseases. I don't expect you to feel as passionately as I do about this issue, but I know that there will be something in daily life that gets under your skin too. Be this inequality, homelessness, rudeness, even a relationship you'd like to fix. Look inside and ask, why does this bother you, and what can you do about it? Because it doesn't have to be big. Just shift the dial a little bit. It might be a poem. It might be a conversation. But use your spark to light a fire in someone else, because you never know where it might lead. And if you're sat there thinking, no, I'm just too small to make a difference, then I want you to meet my flesh-eating parasite, because in so many ways, it gave me the best love bite I've ever had. Thank you.